If you don't like isolation but still crave adventure, then Easter Island is your next destination. Imagine the vastness of the Pacific Ocean. Now picture a tiny island in this massive expanse. This is Easter Island, a remote speck of land. The island's isolation is profound. It's thousands of miles from any major continent. Easter Island is officially known as Rapa Nui, but the island is most famous for another reason, the Moai statues. These monolithic figures are iconic. They are a testament to a lost civilization. Despite its isolation, the island possesses a stark beauty. The Pacific Ocean crashes against its shores. The Moai stand silently, witnesses to the passage of time. How did people reach this tiny island? How did they create and move the massive Moai? These questions have intrigued explorers and scientists for centuries. The story of Easter Island is a tale of human ingenuity. The Moai statues are Easter Island's most striking feature. These massive stone figures dot the island's landscape. They stand as silent guardians. Carved from volcanic rock, the Moai are imposing figures. They range in height from a few feet to over 30 feet. Each Moai possesses unique characteristics. The sheer scale of the Moai is impressive. The largest ones weigh over 80 tons. Their construction was a feat of engineering and artistry. The Moai held deep cultural and religious significance for the Rapa Nui people. They were believed to represent ancestors or important figures. The statues were positioned carefully, often facing inland, watching over the island and its inhabitants. The Moai are a testament to the Rapa Nui people's ingenuity. Easter Island's first inhabitants were intrepid explorers. They braved vast distances across the Pacific Ocean. The Rapa Nui people, as they are known, were skilled seafarers. They possessed an intimate knowledge of the stars and ocean currents. Their arrival on Easter Island is estimated to be around 1200 years ago. They brought with them their Polynesian traditions and beliefs. The island was ripe for settlement and cultivation. The Rapa Nui people established a society and thrived on this isolated island. They adapted to its unique environment. The ocean offered a bounty of seafood. The fertile volcanic soil was ideal for agriculture. The early Rapa Nui people lived in harmony with their surroundings. They developed sustainable practices for farming and fishing. Their society grew and prospered. The Rapa Nui people developed a complex social structure. They were organized into clans and family groups. Each clan had its own territory and resources. They were led by chiefs who held significant authority. The chiefs oversaw religious ceremonies and directed the construction of the Moai. The island's resources were carefully managed. Cooperation was essential for survival. The Rapa Nui people developed sophisticated agricultural techniques. They used rock gardens to protect crops from wind and salt spray. Despite challenges, the Rapa Nui people thrived for centuries. Their most lasting achievement is the Moai. These statues are a testament to their skill, ingenuity, and spirituality. The Moai statues are central to the Rapa Nui culture. They are more than just impressive carvings. They hold deep spiritual significance. The Moai represent deified ancestors, revered as protectors and guardians. Each Moai was unique, embodying the characteristics of the individual it honored. The placement of the Moai was also deliberate, often on platforms called Ahu. Ceremonies and rituals were performed at the Ahu, and offerings were made to the ancestors. The Moai served as intermediaries between the living and the spirit world. They represented their lineage and heritage, serving as a testament to their ancestors' achievements. The creation of the Moai statues was a monumental undertaking. The Rapa Nui people were master carvers who used simple tools to shape these massive figures. Basalt, a volcanic rock, was the primary material, quarried from a volcanic crater on the island. The carving process began with rough shaping of the basalt, using stone hammers and chisels. As the figure emerged, finer tools were employed, and the statues were meticulously detailed. The final step was to transport the Moai to their designated locations. The scale and detail of the Moai are a testament to their artistry. The Moai statues were born in a place of fire and stone. Rano Raraku is a volcanic crater that served as the main quarry for the Moai. Here, the Rapa Nui people found the perfect material. Basalt, a volcanic rock, is hard and durable, making it ideal for carving. The Moai statues vary in size from a few feet tall to giants over 30 feet. The unfinished Moai at Rano Raraku provide clues and offer insights into the carving process. It's as if the carvers stopped work mid-project, and the reason for this abrupt halt remains a mystery. 
The Rapa Nui people were skilled craftsmen. They used simple tools to create the moai. Their most important tool was the toki, a handheld stone chisel. The toki was used for shaping and carving the statues. The carvers also used stone hammers for rough shaping. Wooden levers and rollers helped maneuver the massive statues. The process was labor-intensive and required great precision and skill. Evidence suggests that the moai were carved in place and separated from the bedrock only after completion. This was a delicate operation requiring careful planning and execution. The carving techniques used by the Rapa Nui people are still studied today. The moai statues are not uniform in appearance. They display a range of styles and features. Some moai have elongated faces with prominent brows known as the classic style. Later, moai exhibit more elaborate features with larger heads and wider bodies. Some moai have distinctive headdresses called pukau, carved from red scoria. The moai statues were arranged in groups on platforms called ahu. These platforms were carefully constructed from large stone blocks, often located near the coast. The arrangement of the moai on the ahu varied, with some ahu holding a single statue and others supporting dozens. The statues were typically placed facing inland, watching over the island and its inhabitants. The moai are a testament to the Rapa Nui people's artistry and cultural significance. The exact purpose of the moai statues remains a mystery. The most widely accepted theory is that the moai represent deified ancestors. The Rapa Nui people had a strong belief in ancestor worship. The moai may have served as physical representations of these ancestors. They were a way to honor and appease the spirits. The moai may have also served a social and political function, symbolizing power and prestige. The different styles of moai may reflect changes in Rapa Nui society over time. The moai statues continue to intrigue and inspire us today. The moai statues of Easter Island present a captivating puzzle. But how did the Rapa Nui people move these massive figures? The statues were carved at Rano Raraku. This quarry is miles from the coastal areas. The largest moai weigh over 80 tons. The island terrain is uneven, dotted with volcanic craters and hills. The transportation of the moai was a logistical feat. Over the years many theories have emerged to explain how the moai were moved. Some propose the use of logs while others suggest ropes and ramps. The lack of written records deepens the mystery. Archaeological evidence provides some clues but the exact techniques remain a subject of debate. The transportation of the moai is a testament to human ingenuity and determination. One of the most intriguing theories about moai transportation involves walking the statues. This theory is supported by oral traditions and recent experiments. The statues were carved with a slightly curved base, allowing them to rock back and forth. Imagine a team of workers using ropes and wooden levers to pull the statue from side to side. The rocking motion combined with strategic pushes propels the statue forward. It takes small steps, almost as if it's walking. In 1986, archaeologist Charles Love led a team that successfully moved a 10-ton Moai replica using this technique. It took 18 people and three days to move the replica a short distance. The walking theory fits with the Rapa Nui people's belief that the Moai contained the spirits of their ancestors. Moving the statues in this way would have been respectful, like helping the ancestors walk across the land. Another plausible theory involves a combination of ropes, rocks, and manpower. This method, known as the rope and rock hypothesis, relies on simple tools and techniques. Imagine a massive Moai lying on its back. Workers use wooden rollers and levers to position the statue and place rocks under its base. Teams of workers use thick ropes attached to the statue's head, pulling with all their might. Others use wooden levers to help maneuver the statue, pushing it forward, inch by inch, up the incline. This method, while labor-intensive, is feasible and utilizes basic physics principles like leverage and friction. The Rapa Nui people were known for their ingenuity and could have developed this technique through trial and error. The rope and rock hypothesis aligns with archaeological evidence, as researchers have found remnants of ramps and platforms near some moai. These structures could have been used to facilitate this method of transportation. Archaeology is like solving a giant jigsaw puzzle. On Easter Island, the pieces are scattered across the landscape. Each fragment tells a story. They whisper about the lives of the Rapa Nui people. Excavations have uncovered a wealth of artifacts. These artifacts shed light on the island's past. One significant discovery was the unearthing of ancient villages. These villages were once home to the Rapa Nui people. Remains of houses, tools, and everyday objects were found. These findings give us a glimpse into their daily lives. 
we learn about their diet, their craftsmanship, and their social interactions. Another major discovery was the excavation of the Ahu platforms. These platforms were not just bases for the Moai statues, they were also burial sites. Tombs were found beneath some platforms, they contained the remains of Rapa Nui ancestors, offerings were buried alongside them. This confirms the importance of ancestor worship in their culture. The artifacts unearthed on Easter Island are invaluable, they help us piece together the story of the Rapa Nui people. We gain a deeper understanding of their beliefs, their practices, and their interactions with their environment. Each discovery brings us closer to unraveling the mysteries of this ancient civilization. Section 2. The Mystery of the Abandoned Moai Rano Raraku, the Moai quarry, holds a compelling mystery. Hundreds of statues were left unfinished. They stand frozen in time. Some are nearly complete. They seem ready to be transported. Others are just rough outlines. It's as if the carvers downed their tools and walked away. What caused this sudden halt in Moai production? Theories abound. One possibility is resource depletion. The intensive carving may have exhausted the quarry's usable basalt. Another theory points to social upheaval. Competition between clans may have escalated into conflict. This conflict could have disrupted the island's social order. The arrival of Europeans in the 18th century adds another layer to the puzzle. Their presence brought disease and exploitation to the island. This disruption further impacted the Rapa Nui people and their traditions. The carving and transportation of the Moai may have been abandoned as a result. The abandoned Moai at Rano Raraku are a poignant reminder of the fragility of human societies. They highlight how even the most ambitious endeavors can be cut short by unforeseen circumstances. The silence of the unfinished statues speaks volumes about the lost history of Easter Island. The Talking Statues The Moai statues may be silent sentinels, but they whisper stories through their very existence. Scientists have developed new techniques, these techniques help us hear these whispers. Analyzing the chemical composition of the basalt reveals the origin of the stone. It provides insights into the movement of materials across the island. Another technique focuses on the carvings themselves. Researchers study the tool marks and weathering patterns. These clues shed light on the carving techniques and the chronology of Moai production. The Moai statues, once thought to be mute witnesses to the past, are now revealing their secrets. Through scientific inquiry and careful observation, we are learning to listen to the stories etched into their stone faces. The Moai statues of Easter Island are more than just remnants of a lost civilization. They stand as powerful symbols of human ingenuity and resilience. These monolithic figures have captivated the world's imagination for centuries. They continue to inspire awe and wonder in all who encounter them. The story of the Rapa Nui people is a complex one. It's a story of innovation and adaptation, but also of resource depletion and societal change. The rise and fall of their civilization offer valuable lessons about the delicate balance between humans and their environment. The Moai, in their silent grandeur, serve as a poignant reminder of the importance of sustainability and the need to respect the limits of our planet. The Enduring Gaze of the Moai the Moai statues, with their enigmatic expressions, seem to gaze out at the world with a wisdom born of centuries. They have witnessed the rise and fall of a civilization and the ongoing efforts to understand and preserve their legacy. Their silent presence invites contemplation on the passage of time and the enduring power of cultural heritage. As we stand before these massive figures we are reminded that we are all connected across time and space. The stories of the Rapa Nui people, embodied in the Moai, resonate with our own human experiences. They are powerful symbols of resilience, adaptation, and the enduring spirit of humanity. The Moai's gaze challenges us to appreciate the diversity of human cultures and to protect our shared heritage. Thank you for watching Tech and Trek. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.